Dziękuję, panie. Thank you very much, Mr. Zahradil. And now I give the floor to the representative of the Green Group, uh, co-president Rebecca Harms. Mr. President, Mr. Duran Barroso, colleagues. I don't think there's anybody in the room that wasn't pleased to hear what you had to say today, that you are willing to make the great leap forward for Europe. And I'm sure you inferred that from the applause you received. But before we start talking about uh, the aspects, different aspects of the leap forward, uh, I'd like to say a word or two to describe our analysis of the situation. Mr. Verhofstadt uh, is uh, in bad shape. Now, in terms of a financial and economic crisis, we've got uh, a worst case scenario. We don't have everything under control, far from it. If you look to the member states, it's clear that what we've always said obtains. We're looking at, at small-scale measures taken too late, too little, too late. Now, certain member states have uh, finally voted on, on EFFF, which is no bad uh, idea, but if you look at the time frame, we've got to start looking about mechanisms to prevent crisis in the future. That's the kind of thing we've got to look at. We've got to look at economic governa uh, governance too. Too little, too late. That doesn't just obtain for council. I mean, consider the economic governance package. Uh, this is to be voted on. Now, on this, allow me to say that uh, we took our time over this. Now, there were good reasons to do that, but despite the fact but we're uh, missing golden opportunities with this package. It's not the leap forward towards good development that we want. Now, th we've got stability policy on the one and growth policy, this dichotomy. Now, this, is, this hasn't been addressed in the package either. Now, now I don't think our, our proposals for the financial crisis or our six-pack have addressed fundamental aspects of the problem, and that is that in a number of different areas we have different yardstick, different measures, and that has generated more injustice. And if we don't correct that, then the centrifugal uh, forces increasing. That's, it's not just the, the shuttle diplomacy we talked about, that. that's because uh, citizens will lose uh, their confidence in the EU's ability to act. Now, on injustice, Mr. Barroza, I don't think we can allow things to continue as they currently are. For many years, the financial markets made a great deal of money until the whole system came off the rails and then of course now we're socializing uh, the problems and debts and allowing the profits to remain in the hands of those that are speculated. That's the big problem and I think citizens have understood this, that stabilization uh, is basically something they've had to foot the bill for. There is an increasing need given the debt crisis for us to act. We've got to take steps but ensure that these steps do not lead to further injustices. We can't we can't act off our own bat and individually for uh, to roll out savings measures. I mean look at what's happening look at what's happening in Greece. Uh, that, that the amounts that are the, the measures that are, that they are being required to take is too much for the moderates there in the negotiations on the economic governance package our group has always said that, w that we've got to do things together we've got to fight poverty in the european union at the same time we've got to identify how we can invest in education and training 
and then we've of got to ensure that we that we invest in genuinely sustainable economic growth and development otherwise we will get no backing for more europe among the majority of citizens now three months p before this parliament sends a delegation to durban for the uh, conference there mr barroso let me emphatically state the following you talked about renewable energies in your speech and about investment in sustainable development and so forth. It's really a terrible the way European policy has overlooked a lot of these issues. Consider 2007 and 2008 when we agreed that it would be more expensive not to invest in an ambitious climate policy. It, in intergenerational justice is necessary. That's not going to be achieved by means of austerity measures. Certainly, if we don't have a clear plan as to how we're going to promote sustainable development based on resource efficiency and climate change, we're not going to show fairness to future generations. And I'm afraid that you're falling short of the mark on these areas, Mr. Duran Barroso. Now, on the southern banks of the Mediterranean, Lady Ashton, I hope that uh, you will succeed in of uh, in uh, addressing Europe's actions in the past in the Mediterranean. I wish you all the best uh, in Palestine because a two-state solution and peace state is a key for uh, better development in the Arab world. To conclude, Mr. Duran Barroso your great leap forward. You know that we want that. You're the man who can do something that we've often called for, and that is economic governance. I think in the next few weeks, if you act in accordance with what you said, if you deliver on your promises, you will get support here. If you discuss it with the German or Dutch governments, I hope you will remember Guy Verhofstadt. Uh, you may wish to wonder why he doesn't wish to uh, address what his liberal colleagues in, in his party have said. But Guy, we love your pro-European spirit, but uh, I think you need to, to do something about your colleagues. One further point. Mr. Perenda, the Polish presidency could play a very important role for the new approach you are calling for. Your attitude with Europe, the, w where you want to offset this diplomacy, and I think that the Polish presidency could do a great deal f to, f for treaty change and for and to bring about the economic comes we're calling for to you madam blue card are you ready to answer madam madam Holmes, are you ready to answer on blue card question sure, sure. yes please yeah um liebe rebecca würdest du uh, zur kenntnis nehmen dass Dear Rebecca, can you, can you assume that the dutch prime minister has proposed that a commissioner Oli Rehn, should be the European Finance Minister. This is a proposal which we think is a good proposal. We agree with this. And then a second question for you. How can you explain? I mean, you've spoken about uh, uh, the investments. You've spoken about wild uh, and not very organized policies. Now, if it, to achieve stability for the Eurozone, in Berlin, the red-green uh, will give us some really good advice. So tell us a bit about your advice. I'm well aware that the Dutch government's position is different to that of the German federal government's position. I'm aware of that. But one thing must not be overlooked. This unconditional commitment to less intergovernmentalism and 
more uh, pro European more, more pre pro Europeanism uh, advertised here by Mr. Verhofstadt is not shared by the governments and as to our criticism of three reports that are up for the vote this week we really believe that we need sustainable fiscal policy. We believe in generational fairness. Greece is an example. The way uh, budgets are managed in Greece is not something we can tolerate. If you can't generate a future for young people if you're not able to say how you're going to bring about sustainable development, then we don't think that is a contribution to intergenerational solidarity. Next speaker, Mr. Lothar Bisky, President, the United Left.